is helpful because it sort of drives home each one. And then the next verse comes to the practical. Look at what he says. And the things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me practice these things. Quite a statement, Paul. He doesn't say, and you've seen in Christ, because they've not seen the Christ. He's gone. He's been raised and ascended. But now on this earth is a model that they can follow. His name is Paul. And Paul isn't hesitant to say, these are things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Practice them. And the God of peace will be with you. I want to take these six words. Hey, so I am at my parents' place. I haven't been over here since I got back because they, they were fighting a, a, a really bad cold. My brother had strep throat. And I didn't want to get it, so I refused to come over here. Except I did come over here to put stuff in the basement, but I didn't get it, so. But I decided I didn't want to even take the chance until I knew they got over it, but they're over it, and so here I am. And my father and my brother just got back from the pizza place. They got pizza. I guess since I've been gone for like a year, they still get pizza every single, every single Sunday. Wait a minute. IHOP sells hamburgers now? Huh? IHOP sells hamburgers now? You have what hamburgers? I, IHOP or IHOB? Yeah, IHOP has hamburgers now. IHOP. IHOP. International House of Burgers? They no longer serve pancakes. I never knew that time. I just like commercial. I'm watching. I'm watching golf of all sports. I'm watching golf, and that came on. Why? That's the craziest thing. Here I am. I think that in every single video that I have uploaded on this new channel, I have used the phrases, I am stressed or I have been stressed. And I want to get serious. Let's talk about stress. Stress sucks. Stress happens to everyone. It doesn't matter who you are. Everybody gets or has stress at least one or more times in their life. If you have a lot of stress throughout your life, you're pretty normal. If you don't have a lot of stress, you're not human and I don't like you. But stress is good for the heart, the mind, and the soul as much as people want to disagree with me. It's like bacteria. If you eat a little bit of bacteria, like if you cook steak and you don't cook it all the way, like there's still, you know, although it, there's nothing like E. coli, like E. coli is not even like a bacteria, it's like a, a death bug. But if, you know, the more you eat little bits of bacteria, the stronger you are to a bigger form of that bacteria. And it's like us as kids. In middle school and high school, if we're not the most popular person or, you know, that guy you have a crush on is was taken from you or not taken from you, but someone got him first, that leads to little, little stress. It'll slip. Mm. But then in, when you graduate high school and you go into college and you go into the real world and you're dealt with things that aren't, aren't as similar, but there's some similarity to them, but they're in a greater form. Chances are you're going to be able to handle it because you've had the little bits of good stress. Now, I think that there's more bad stress than there is good stress. Now, there are some big forms of good stress, such as 
it's normal to have big hiccups in your marriage because finances happen. You cannot help arguing over finances. So I, I, I consider that to be something that you can't handle and it happens. And it's good stress because if you get over it, then you pretty much can conquer the world. But then there's the unnecessary stress that I consider bad stress. It's if a husband gets really upset at her, his wife for taking the last box of macaroni and cheese. And it just wrinkles up the marriage and makes a lot of arguments. That's unnecessary. Why would you get stressed over your wife eating the last box of mac and cheese? Yeah, she's a pig. It's fine. But that should not cause stress. Little things that really have easy answers or have no room for stress is considered completely unnecessary. That's the stress that is the worst, is unnecessary stress. But the good news is that no matter what stress, good, bad, you know, whatever, the small stress, the big stress, there's always a stressor. And if you're unfamiliar with the term stressor, it's basically the instigator or something that triggers stress. And if you could figure out what the stress, or if you figure out what the stressor is, you can eliminate it and stress will be gone. Stress, a stressor could be anything from an animal to a person to a thing to even emotions or the way you think. Now, I think that trying to get rid of, rid of the stresses in your mind, or like emotions and thoughts, can be pretty difficult because that's just who we are. That's how we think, and it's really hard to not think the same way we do. And God bless those who have that kind of stress because basically you're, you, you are your own enemy. And it sucks, but there's one person who I know who can wipe that away, and that's God. But, you know... God can take away any stress of that as long as you just turn your eyes upon him because there are some stresses or stresses, excuse me, that will not go away or you refuse to get rid of them, such as an animal. If you're, if you have a pit bull, well, I don't want to say pit bull, but an animal that is known to buy, I love pit bulls, an animal that terrorizes a neighborhood and bit a child's arm and your court order to get rid of it. But between that and the court order, it brings a lot of stress because you know your animal is deadly. And it's stressful because you don't want to get rid of it. That's a form of good stress, I think. But that also can be, to some people, unnecessary. But depends on who you are, I guess. Like, if you don't care about kids' arms being ripped off by an animal, then that's just who you are. I think the most ridiculous kinds of stresses are the ones that just won't go away. And I have that. I have a stressor that just doesn't get it. And elimination apparently isn't part of this stress's vocabulary. And I... I... I am suffering from my stress, and I can't get rid of it because my stressor is incapable of understanding that I am losing my mind. I am trying to fill my days with happiness and with joy and, you know, with a new boyfriend, but then all of a sudden the stress just creeps in because the stressor has now become the stress, which is like a dog-eat-dog -dog kind of thing. Well, not, not, not that I'm, I think I'm using, I'm, I'm using the wrong term. In fact, I, I, don't think I, I don't think I even know that term. But it's a contradiction. It's almost unheard of a stressor being the stress. Like, 
going back to the wife eating the macaroni and cheese, the wife isn't the stressor. It's the mac and cheese. The mac and cheese is the stressor. So, the, so, but I've never heard of the stress of being the stress, and that is ridiculous. It used to be just me, like, I was my own stress, and, and the stress it was something else. And now it's just kind of shifted because I'm, try, I'm trying to brush off the stress and focus on things that are important to my life. And the stress, it just won't get it. Now, I just want to put that out there. That took, a, that, took a long, that took a lot of brain power to say that. But stress sucks. And this is not good stress. This is unnecessary stress. This is like the husband getting mad at the wife eating the last mac and cheese. Unnecessary. And I'm tired of fighting it. I, I need to turn my eyes to God. Because sometimes I tell myself, like, Lord, can you just, like, strike down my stress or just, like, zzz? But, you know, that's, that's me. But I just, I want to be free. Stress sucks. But if I overcome this stress, I will be able to overcome anything. but I need it to go away forever. Stress. It's good for the heart, mind, and soul. It is.